Sessions 19 and 20, Variability. Variability is the measure of process consistency. For example, if the output ranges from 15 ounces of water to 16.5 ounces, the output variability is 1.5 ounce. If process cycle time is sometimes as short as 8 minutes, and sometimes as long as 10 minutes, the cycle time variability is 2 minutes. Variability causes the following types of problems. Customer complaints and returns, late orders, inconsistent cycle time or throughput, outputs that have to be scrapped or reworked due to unacceptable quality, and operator frustration with equipment, raw materials, or other operators. Reducing variability by making processes operate more consistently improves customer satisfaction, leading to more sales, reduces the need for inventory, reduces operator frustration with processes, and reduces the cost to manage processes. Variability can be broken down into three types. Input variability is the consistency of process inputs. Process variability is the consistency of processes. Output variability is the consistency of process outputs. If the inputs to a process are consistent and the process operates in a consistent manner, outputs should be consistent. In class exercise 24, the operators are asked to identify ways in which the outputs of the process from class exercise 3 can vary. Use this exercise to ensure that the operators understand the concept of variability. The second question asks how the operators determine if the outputs are acceptable. What tools and processes are used to determine if process outputs are acceptable? This will be discussed further when we get to critical measurements. One way to begin reducing process variability is to identify problems caused by process variability. Problems such as late customer orders, customer complaints and returns, outputs that have to be scrapped or reworked due to unacceptable quality, inconsistent cycle time or throughput, or operator complaints about equipment, raw materials, processes, or other workers. Then correct the problems caused by process variability using Pareto charts, root cause analysis, and action items. In class exercise 25, the operators will list some of the problems caused by variability. Use this question to ensure that the operators see the connection between variability and problems. Some of the problems may already be on your problem list. For question 2, the operators select one of the process variability problems based on impact and then in part three, draw a fishbone diagram to locate all the root causes. To prioritize and select a problem, you can use these methods. Pareto chart of the problems, which problem has the greatest impact based on group discussion. Take into consideration that upset customers can have a big impact on sales and profits. Work through drawing a fishbone diagram. Drawing a fishbone diagram takes some effort, but a lot will be learned from the exercise and the proper corrective actions will become obvious. In sessions 21 and 22, we will discuss the role of critical measurements in reducing variability. Sessions 21 and 22, Critical Measurements. Some measurements are critical for determining if outputs are satisfactory to customers, external and internal. An external customer is the end user of the finished product. An internal customer is the downstream process that receives the outputs of an intermediate process. Processes should consistently create outputs that are satisfactory. First, we need to identify the critical attributes or measurements based on what customers need and expect. Then set standards for the measurements based on the range that is acceptable by the customers. Clearly document the standards using a critical measurement grid. 
There's a blank critical measurements form in the appendix and an Excel copy included with the leader training flash drive. The standards should be posted in a manner that allow the operators to quickly reference them. Develop tools and processes so operators can quickly measure the outputs to determine if they are acceptable. Go no-go gauges can be a foolproof way to quickly measure the acceptability of outputs. In class exercise 26, the operators identify some of the critical measurements for the processes that they work with and fill out a critical measurement grid for the measurements. The measurements should be critical to satisfying internal customers or end customers. They could be related to the variability problems listed in class exercise 25. Make sure the operators understand the concept of internal customer. An internal customer is another area of the company that receives the outputs of a process, either to process the outputs further or to sell to the external customer. In part two of the exercise, the operators complete a critical measurement grid for one of the measurements. There is a blank form in the operator workbook. The operators may need help getting all the information needed to complete the grid. Invite any employees who would have the needed information to attend the class. When critical measurements are in effect, there will be outputs that fall outside of the acceptable range and will be rejected. To reduce process rejects, reject data needs to be collected. Track rejects using a reject log. There's a blank form in the operator workbook and on the leader flash drive. After enough reject data has been collected, make a Pareto chart of the reject types. Do a root cause analysis of the leading type of rejects. Assign action items to correct the root causes. In session 23, we will discuss two more tools for reducing variability, standard operating procedures and statistical process control. In session 23, you will discuss standard operating procedures and briefly mention statistical process control. Each process should be performed consistently by following the best available practice, even when different operators are performing the process. To do this, determine what the best available practice is and document using a standard operating procedure, also known as an SOP. In an SOP, you list and describe each task and give detailed instructions of how to perform each task using the best available methods. Use diagrams or pictures as needed to clarify the instructions. Use any format that works best for the situation, pictures, videos, charts, etc. SOPs should be stored in a manner that makes them quick and easy for operators to access and reference. A lot of companies have computer terminals set up so the operator can call up the SOP and see it on a computer screen. Or it can be a single three ring binder at the workstation. The most experienced operators should participate in developing the procedures because they should have the greatest working knowledge of the process. All operators should agree to follow the standard operating procedures. If an operator feels there is a better way to perform a task, listen to the operator's suggestions for improving the procedure. And if the suggestion makes sense, update and improve the SOP. Make sure all the operators that perform the task are aware of the changes. Next, we will briefly mention a tool called Statistical Process Control also known as SPC, that can be used for reducing variability to very small amounts. Any operation that wants to minimize variability should have at least one employee who is trained in SPC. SPC is beyond the scope of this course, but it's mentioned here because it's an important tool for reducing variability. Let's talk briefly about reducing input variability. To reduce input variability, Inspect raw materials as they are received from suppliers using critical measurements as discussed in session 22. Work with your suppliers to ensure consistent quality 
and delivery cycle time. Track on-time performance failures by your suppliers using a Pareto chart. Share the Pareto chart with your suppliers and collaborate with them to fix the root causes of delivery on-time failures. You can also share the Cheetah program with them to help them rapidly improve their on-time performance. Let's recap what we've discussed concerning variability. Reducing variability is critical for increasing the demand for your products and increasing profits. We've discussed several tools for reducing variability, and it may seem overwhelming. So, take it one step at a time. Start by identifying and removing process variability problems. The problems will help to identify where you need to document critical measurements. After a critical measurement is in place, start a reject log for the measurement. Writing standard operating procedures takes considerable time, so start with the process steps where needed most. Cheetah streamlines processes and frees up resources. Later, after using Cheetah for a while and your processes have been streamlined and more resources are available, then begin a widespread SOP program. If you need to reduce variability to minuscule amounts, employ control charts and SPC. With real operator participation, reducing variability can be a rewarding experience instead of an unpleasant struggle. Coming up next, Sessions 24 and 25 in Process Inventory.